definition of opportunity cost. And this is the major topic for today. It's the highest valued alternative that we sacrifice, that we give up when we try to do something else. As rational human beings, we are very much attuned to the idea of what we're doing, not what we're giving up. So opportunity cost can be a foreign idea for the first time you actually encounter it. And the part of opportunity cost that is difficult to grasp is how we're going to fold or incorporate the element of time into our decision-making process. We're real good at thinking, hey, this is economics, it's all about financial matters, and certainly financial matters are very much a part of this course. But the amount of time we spend on something uh, represents lost opportunities, uh, hence an opportunity cost. So we want to fold the value of time into our financial calculations. Here's a little example you can think of uh, with spring break. Actually, just about six weeks away. Think of it. That's pretty cool. Um, so suppose you're traveling from State College to Fort Lauderdale. No good way to get from State College to Fort Lauderdale by plane. You're going to have to hit a connection somewhere. Um, or you can take a bus. Those are the only two options I'm presenting to this question. So for those of you that uh, are tempted to violate Keteris Paribus, you should not be thinking about, well, wait, I just drive. We're not going to think about that. I'm going to hitchhike down to Fort Lauderdale. No, nope, we're not going to think about it. I could take a train. No, nope, we're not going to think about that. Right? Just two options. How do you get from here to there on a plane or a bus? So with that as background, I guess what I need to ask you, you guys can jump in here, is what do we need to know to answer that question? What's the first thing you would do if you thought you were going to Fort Lauderdale? Yeah. Price of a bus ticket versus price of a plane ticket. Absolutely, right? You're going you're to get on the internet, and you're going to look up bus ticket prices and airline prices, and you're going to do all the quick math. Which one's cheap, right? So that's the first thing you do. Then what's the second thing you do? Yeah. How long does one take? Yeah, how long does each one take, right? If you think about it, the next question will be, well, you know, how quickly can I get there on the plane? How long will it take on the bus? Very good, right? So we get the prices. We get the time. Are we good to go? Yeah. Weather. Okay, so he wants to think about the weather, and that might be an issue with uh, airplane travel uh, and or bus travel, depending upon what the road to is. Since it's a long time for the bus, how much is your time worth? Yeah, so the, so the other question, he's answered sort of my the third thing I was looking for, is if we're going to spend significantly more time getting there in one mode of transportation versus the other, what's our time worth? And we're not usually thinking of this so explicitly, but we do here in economics. You've got to have a number in the back of your head as to what your time is worth so you can compare the plane versus the bus. Uh, and so that's what I've tried to do on the next slide, where I've just plugged in some values that we can all agree upon, and then we can work out the math here together as a group. So if it turns out the plane ticket is $400 and the bus ticket is $200, well, then we know immediately that the bus is cheap. But of course, that doesn't mean that we then all pile on various buses to get down there, because just because the bus is cheaper doesn't make it the, the right decision. In fact, most people, when presented with a lower priced bus option, in many cases still choose to fly, because they're thinking about the value of their time. So the second part of this would be checking all the schedules and asking when would I depart and when would I arrive. And, and to keep it simple, suppose that the plane takes you four hours each way, and that the bus takes you 24 hours down and 24 hours back. So there's a significant time difference here. Did we have enough information? No, we did not, right? So what we need to know, and this is the part that it becomes crucial for us to figure this out in class, is let's suppose that the person's time is worth $8 an hour. Now, that's just me arbitrarily choosing a value that we can use to plug in and solve this particular problem. So I'm going to head over then to the document camera and pull that up. And I'm going to take those pieces of information to solve this problem, uh, and that'll give us a basis for thinking about uh, how to move forward here. Okay, so here we go. You got a plane, and you got a bus. The plane is $400 out of pocket. The bus is $200 out of pocket. What are we gonna do with that? Well, we know there's an extra cost here. It's four hours down and four hours back, so we wanna add eight hours of time to the cost of the plane, and we want to add 24 hours down and 24 hours back to the cost of the bus, which is 48 hours, and then we just have to figure out what's the value of that time, but we've already assumed the value of that time would be 
eight dollars an hour. So I'm going to multiply the eight hours times eight dollars an hour, and eight times eight is sixty-four. That's the time value of money lost on the plane. And then I'm going to do the same thing by multiplying the 48 hours times the $8 an hour that this person's time is worth. And I'm going to take 48 times 8, just for simplicity, 50 times 8 would be 400. And then we'll subtract off uh, 16 from that. So that's 384. Now, once we've got the financial cost and we've got the time cost, we can add those together. And we're going to see that the price of the plane is $464, and the price of the bus is 200 plus 384, and that's going to be 584. So for a person whose value of their time is actually just a little bit over the minimum wage, in this example, the plane is the more attractive option. And in fact, that's how most people would choose to get to to Florida. And if your time value is really low, maybe you know, two dollars an hour, and you're unemployed, you have no value of your time, well then saving the two hundred dollars might be an attractive option and you choose to take the bus instead. That's one way of kind of resolving what we actually see happen in the real world where individuals uh, are doing a complex set of calculations to arrive at the answer. Okay, so with that in mind, it's time for our first think pair share. I wanted to wait until we had to drop ad, which was this morning at 8 a.m. So uh, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to change some of these numbers a little bit, change it, and then I'm going to ask you to partner up with one or two other people in this room. So groups of two or three. Any group of one is not eligible for any participation points. You must partner up with somebody else, just so you know. Uh, and your task over the next three minutes is to confront the question I'm about to give you, to write up a compelling answer, uh, and if you don't initially agree with your partner, then to try to convince your partner that you know what the right answer is um, so that uh, we can learn through this process of thinking about the question, then carry on, and then we'll share the answer. Okay, so here's your question. In the previous example, suppose you do not know the value of a person's time. So $8 an hour gone. Find the K per hour that would make the plane travel and the bus travel equally attractive. You guys are on the clock. Have fun. So here's my question for you in terms of the, the problem. When you turn to somebody nearby and became their partner, is there somebody out there who initially wasn't exactly sure how to tackle this problem, but when you turned to your partner, your partner said, hey, I know how to do this, and they showed you kind of an elegant way of solving the problem. Anybody have a partner like that? You turn to somebody, and they, they just flat out, put your hand up high. I mean, if you're like really confident about this here. So, so you're so confident about your partner, you'd be willing to put your partner on the spot. <laughs> I got, I got like three people here. Who is way back here? You got a partner? Yeah. Right, where? Who's your partner? Yeah, I'm right here. All right, so would you mind then uh, sharing your expertise with the class? You got to come up to the document camera and uh, work it out for us. You got it? He's got it, okay. I am going to turn over my mic And we're just going to see what he's got to say. Madam. All right, so what we did was we set up a proportion, basically we just have to equal each other. So we knew that the plane was 400 plus hours times the variable. 
Terus So after that you just set it up and set it equal to each other. So we got uh, 8x plus 4 plus 8 equals 4x plus 200. Uh, as we work through this course, and uh, that was very well done. 